All right, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Herbert Hoover reacts to the Great Depression. Uh, the common narrative is that he did too little too late, and this is very much the, the, the narrative that the Democrats proposed in Congress, that this is their objection, that Hoover wasn't doing enough. But what did he actually do? Well, what he actually did, he, he did several things. One of the big projects that he's, he's most remembered for is the construction of the Hoover Dam. Uh, it was completed during FDR's term, and it was called the Boulder Dam initially because the disdain for Herbert Hoover was so great that nobody wanted to give him credit for coming up with the idea, but, but certainly the dam provided thousands of jobs out in the West uh, in, in the actual construction of the dam, uh, and even more significantly, the power that it supplied. In fact, it's still one of the main power supply uh, power sources for, for the Western United States. Power is Las Vegas, uh, power is Los Angeles. A lot of the power from Hoover Dam is uh, uh, shipped all the way to L.A., and a lot of the growth that occurred in California was made possible because of the Hoover Dam. Uh, the brainchild of Herbert Hoover and, and the, its chief proponent. Uh, the Federal Farm Marketing Board, another idea Hoover, Herbert Hoover has and tries to implement, was an idea that was going to try to help farmers sell their produce. Uh, and, and so farmers were having trouble selling their crops. Maybe they needed help selling it, and the government could do that. That's what the purpose of the Federal Farm Marketing Board. Herbert Hoover also uh, develops the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which was going to make loans to businesses, uh, in particular to banks and railroads. The idea was that what people needed most was jobs, and, and the way to get them jobs was to go ahead and help business succeed uh, and to grow. And, and so if you made loans, especially to banks, to financial institutions, they would then be able to go ahead and loan that money out to small businesses, and, and you would go ahead and create jobs in that way. Uh, also, railroads were another favorite um, a favorite industry of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation because, again, uh, railroads were very large, and the infrastructure that they had... Uh, uh, would go ahead and spur growth in all different areas. If you build a railroad line, which you find as towns develop along it, people go ahead and move out there. Uh, and, and so railroads tend to foster growth, or at least that was the thinking. Uh, Herbert Hoover also recognizes that people were losing their homes and, and that they needed to be able to stay in their homes. Uh, that if people uh, become homeless, it becomes harder to get a job, it becomes harder to support yourself. So uh, he comes up with the Home Loan Bank Act, which gave low interest loans to in particular farmers, but also to other homeowners. And the idea was, again, to prevent foreclosures, that, look, if you wanted a job, one of the first questions they ask you when you go in to apply is, what's your address? If you don't have an address, well, it's harder to get a job. And so that was one of his programs. Nonetheless, again, Congress views, uh, who's controlled by the Democrats, views Hoover as doing too little, and they're uh, strongly critical of his efforts as being insufficient. And, and likewise, Hoover thinks Congress wants to do too much. He thinks that Congress is expanding the role of government beyond what it should be. Uh, and so the two are kind of at loggerheads. They, they are at a, a, an impasse. They, they, they can't get around this. And uh, so Congress doesn't put any of his Hoover's bills through. They don't pass any of his bills because they think they're insufficient. And Hoover doesn't approve any of Congress's bills because he thinks they do too much. And you end up with an ideological stalemate. Just as much the fault of Congress as it is of Herbert Hoover. Um, rugged individualism, then, uh, is really one of the fundamental ways that Herbert Hoover thinks about uh, addressing the Great Depression. It's a belief in helping yourself, a belief not only in helping yourself of an individual, but of local communities in helping the poor. He did not feel that big government was the answer. He felt like, no, the answer had to come from the American citizens themselves. It had to be local charities, local communities, people helping people. He distrusts big government. He is wary of big government. He's afraid that big government is going to become abusive and intrusive uh, on people's lives, if not immediately, then down the road. And uh, somewhat, somewhat concerning in light of the recent revelations about uh, what our, our government's involved with, with the NSA and different things. Uh, the effects this has on policy, then, is that um, uh, the, Hoover lends money to states and to businesses, but he, he doesn't give direct aid to individuals. And, and so he's seen as, oh, you're interested in helping the, the powerful, you're interested in helping the wealthy, but you're not interested in helping the poor, the average everyday man. Uh, but he believes that federal aid, in fact, would be, uh, would be destructive to the average everyday man, that it would destroy a person's self-respect. And in fact, if you go ahead and offer direct aid to people, what in fact you will create is a group of people that don't feel like they can do it themselves, a group of people that will remain dependent for their entire lives on, on government and on government aid. It will destroy people's self-respect. And, and Hoover sticks to these things. He was an ideologue. He was not a pragmatist. He was not willing to change on certain things. Uh, and, and so he refuses to work with Congress. He doesn't go ahead and approve their legislation. This is also evidence in how he deals with the bonus army. You know, the bonus army comes and says, hey, we want our, our bonus early. Hoover says, no, you agreed to the 36. We're going to stick to our original agreement. 
Uh, Hoover's unwillingness to change also evidenced in, in the way he held and clung to the gold standard, the idea that uh, all of our money should be backed by a certain amount of gold, that if you had a dollar, you could go to the Treasury Department, trade that dollar in, and you would get a certain amount of gold in exchange for that dollar. That was the gold standard, and Her Hoover felt like that's something we should stick with, that it made our money stable, and that it made our, our, our money valuable. And there are others who advocate, no, we should move away from that to have an elastic money supply, which is what we have today. Uh, we've gone off the gold standard. Uh, war debts. Herbert Hoover was not willing to go ahead and forgive the war debts from World War I, the, the debts of England, the debts of France. He's like, no, you guys borrow this money, you need to pay it back. And Hoover remained inflexible on that. He was not going to go ahead and forgive those debts. So why don't we go ahead and take just a moment to... Uh, Go ahead and ask ourselves a few questions, see if we can go ahead and remember a little bit about what we just heard, and we're good. That's it in a nutshell.